NFL on EA Sports, and we'll see who rules the skies in today's battle. It's the Philadelphia Eagles and the Seattle Seahawks, and it's all just ahead on Madden NFL 23. With the beautiful Puget Sound just to rest, you're going to look inside Lumen Field here in Seattle, Washington. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Seattle Seahawks. Welcome in, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gaunton, and Charles, so much gets made about offensive comparisons. Here's a matchup where the defenses may just take center stage. Yeah, we're usually talking about guys scoring touchdowns. How about the guys who prevent them and change the momentum of the game when they take the ball away? I love those ball hawks in the secondary. People after my own heart. to get this one started. And off we go from Seattle. And this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. Now, for the first time, we get to see this Philadelphia offense led out by their dual-threat quarterback now in his third season, Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts got the green light as a starter from the Philly organization and took really good steps as the next in line of mobile quarterbacks in the city following names like Michael Vick, Donovan McNabb, and Randall Cunningham. He led the team in all quarterbacks in the NFL in rushing, and he took Philadelphia to the postseason while throwing for over 3,000 yards. Hurts throwing right away. And his first look is incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call, and they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And the Seahawks have picked it up. Not the way they pictured that opening drive unfolding. No, they were making progress. They weren't exactly in high gear, but they were, they were making a few yards along the way. Now that they've coughed it up, you got to go back to the sidelines and regroup a little bit. As Seattle's offense comes onto the field, we'll see a 10-year veteran under center. The guy who broke into the league as a starter back in 2013, Geno Smith. I still remember back in 2013 when he was drafted out of West Virginia. He was coming off a of back-to-back 4,000-yard seasons for the Mountaineers. Hadn't seen as much game time in recent years, but at one point, a capable starter in the NFL. Following the fumble recovery, Smith. And he fires one that's intercepted. Darius Slay with a pick. And the Eagles are going to take over. thing he says we we're walking off the field want to play mistake free football well that just went out the window there with a pick and you remember what you said to me when we were walking up to the booth after he said that you're like oh fatal last words every time we hear that things tend to fall apart a little bit and that's what we saw there didn't get enough on that throw and it turned into an interception Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Here's Hurts to throw. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Hurts throw complete here to his receiver, Brown. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. In a draft day stunner, A.J. Brown was shipped from Tennessee to Philadelphia. 
He'd appear to be the long-awaited answer for Tennessee receiver. And that can be that same long-awaited answer in Philadelphia. 2,000-yard seasons and 24 touchdowns in his first three years in the league. He gets Philly to tackle a wide receiver one the team hasn't had in almost a decade. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. I thought there at the end he may have had a chance to release that, but that pocket closed a little too quickly and down he went. Yeah, he was certainly trying to do everything he could to extend the life of the play, probably counting in his head. One, two, and then he ran out of time. So after the sack, they'll come up on a still manageable second and 13. Hurt sets up to throw it. This is caught inside the 15. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Devontae Smith, 49 yards. And the Eagles use the early turnover to get on the board first here in this one. It took them a while to get their speedster involved, but they found him downfield there. And what we've discovered as we've watched games is the speedster doesn't have to have a lot of catches, doesn't have to have volume in order to have a huge impact on the game. His speed scares the heck out of defenses, and other guys can capitalize, but when you finally hit him and he carries it all the way into the end zone, that's what you're paying him for, that big threat that can make big plays on a limited number of catches. That's how you step on the stage with your first catch, take it to the house. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. From the six. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And they got to be pleased with this. He brings it all the way up to the 40-yard line. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others, where they think they have an advantage. Dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards. It moves the sticks. A good run there on the tackle in an old-school NFL football. The right side, the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons, 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. Gino on first down. Open man, that's Noah Fant, the tight end. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. And that's how you shake off the interception and throw on the opening drive, come back and throw another strike and gain nice yardage. And I give credit to two people on this one, the man throwing the ball and the person calling the plays. They're not shutting him down early in this game. Back-to-back good plays have them on the move on first down. Smith. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Brandon Graham applied the heat off the edge. Philadelphia lost Brandon Graham to an Achilles injury just two games into the 2021 season. He had eight sacks in each of the two seasons prior, making the 2020 Pro Bowl. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. They'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. Throwing now is Gino. Steps away. Pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back at the 33-yard line. On comes the Seahawk kicker here on fourth down. It's Jason Myers. 
From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. Myers' kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks have told us end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. The offense running out, and they are charged up, ready to go after reaching the end zone on their last drive. And normally I'd warn against getting complacent just because they scored the last time out. But I don't think there's any worries with this group right now. This is a hungry group, and they want to keep building off of their last drive. Now they just want the officials to hurry up and place the ball so they can snap it and get back to work. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. Hurts. And his throw is going to be incomplete. They saw the they had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Throwing his hurts. Buying time to his left. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Decent gain on the scramble of six, but now it's fourth. Aaron Sipos on the punt as he'll get this one away now. Pulled in at the 24. Just a net of 31 here, 40 yard punt, nine on the return. And it'll be Seahawks football first and 10. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. The last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it. And he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Gino down to throw. They'll roll him out right. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And they'll get this down to the 10. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago. Followed up with another nice one here. And before you know it, they're already looking at first and goal. Now a first down throw, it's Smith, steps away to his left, and he is in for a Seattle touchdown, Geno Smith, a 10-yard touchdown run, and the Seahawks have taken the lead. Well, the defensive coverage was good, so good, he just decided to make a play of his own, and it worked out. Yeah, you often wonder if they think to themselves, was the coverage too good to allow him to run the football? I think you'd rather take your chances with him doing exactly that, and he beat him on that play all the way to the end zone. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. This offense back out and set to go for their next drive. 
And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. He'll look to throw. And this is caught by Watkins. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Miles Sanders, first carry of the game. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. The last run got a couple. here, second and eight. Looking to throw. Hurts fumbles it. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44 yard. This defense, Charles, very opportunistic here early. A second fumble recovery in this first quarter of play. Yeah, you mentioned the right word, opportunistic and aggressive, because once they got the first fumble recovery, they were eager to get a second one, and sometimes they just come in bunches. On the flip side, they've got to figure out how to hold the ball because the play calls seem to be okay. They're just not executing. Smith, following the fumble recovery, he'll throw. Short throw to Disley, and the tackle going to be made at the 38. Ran the perfect defense in this situation. Would have meant that there was an incompletion and would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. This defense has certainly played well so far in this game, and the coverage has been tight on just about every throw. Forced a few here so far in this game, and now it brings up fourth down. And he's going to be marked down just inside the 35. That's an early scramble to review positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, he begins to establish it as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. And defensively, they're going to give me up a huge play in one of their first tests in containing a quarterback on the run. Penny, a first down carry. Stiff arm do. Penny hit in the ball is jarred free. And it's picked up by the Eagles. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, my friend, this has certainly been a comedy of errors here in the first quarter. Neither side able to really hang on to the ball. Yeah, now I'm just curious to see which team can adjust because both have made their mistakes, as you said. Yeah, and whoever can do that can seize firm control of this game, something they haven't done with the ball so far. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that every team gets together for the first time? I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first first day of camp in the regular season. Ball security comes up about what the second sentence of the yeah. coach's address. And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out though. To review the play. The field so that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not Let's be near the fumble. Now 
it's Penny running right. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Now they'll have it first and goal following that gain of 17. So they're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, as you said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. They'll try the air now with Smith. And it's caught. Touchdown, Seahawks. Kobe Blankenship from four yards out. And they are able to add on to their advantage. But he is such a matchup nightmare down near the goal line, CD. And another example right there on that play for the touchdown. It's borderline impossible to defend this guy because that kind of size, he can still get out and run a first round. And he has excellent hands. Even if you stick with him, all the quarterback has to do is lob it up, and he can win almost any jump ball. Myers connects on the PAT. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Fielded right around the eight. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. Last time out, they had the fumble. That led to the touchdown. Not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points too, Charles. But they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession. It's certainly been a tough stretch partner for both of those units in there. Kind of put their defense in mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground. But an easy way to make it up to them, get out there now and get some points on this drive. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Burns fumbles it. And they'll have a short field to work with inside the 15 at the 13-yard line. And that's the third time he's fumbled so far in this game. And, you know, you can make excuses for each and every one of them. But the bottom line is, he's got to take care of it better. And now that he's shown a propensity for fumbling it, just think about what the defenders are trying to do. Yeah, well, guys hate one fumble, twos, oh my goodness, three or more. Wow. Just doesn't make any sense, does it? From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Following the fumble recovery, Smith. That's complete, right around the eight. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there. And this will be caught by Metcalf for a Seahawks touchdown. A five-yard touchdown catch. And the Seahawks are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Well, still in the first quarter, and look out. I mean, they are on pace for over 80 points in this game. I don't know that they'll get their CD, but this has been impressive to watch so far. That certainly would be history in the making, wouldn't it, partner? I'm glad we're here to actually watch and see if it actually happens, although, like you, I have my doubts, but they are firmly in control of this game. Now Myers for the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. That drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them. And plus territory, excellent field position. Two plays later, Pato. After the touchdown.
touchdown. Here's Myers to boot it away. Fielded right around the eight. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. This offense hoping to do better than last time. Remember, they had to fumble. That set up the short field, and then they gave up the touchdown. Okay, and so many people talk about how you have to have a short memory after you make a mistake in the NFL. I don't totally subscribe to that part. There. I think that you have to remember what you did and figure out how to not do it again. Get out there and execute the next time out. Avoid those errors and get some momentum built back up for your offense. From the 21, it's second and 10. They'll set up to throw. Trying for Brown, and it's intercepted. Tariq Woolen puts it, and the Seahawks are going to take over at their own 41. So a nice play defensively by the rookie coming up with the INT. And that's a late round pick right there, making a first round impact. And a lot of these day three corners end up winding up on special teams and sub packages and even on the practice squad. But he's really made an impact on this defense. And he comes up with the interception there. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. They'll start in excellent field position following the INT. Good starting field position here for the Seahawks as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. After the interception, here's Smith. This is the tight end fan. So the completion good for six yards, and it's second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he could break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second down at four. Now Gino. Toward the sideline, and he will have the first down as he was able to keep the feet in bounds. It's a gain of eight, and it'll wind up moving the chains. That was a round run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the short catch and flip the down marker back to one. The red challenge flag making an appearance. Doug Peterson not liking what he saw there. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stays. So not successful there on the challenge, and he'll have to be careful from here on out because he'll only have one challenge remaining. Smith on first down. Ball ball down in the air, and now it's intercepted. Darius Slay with the pick, and the Eagles are going to take over. So really the first speed bump that this offense has encountered. They'd had the rule of the roost here in this first half, but now slowed up just a bit by the interception. And there's a chance that that's a wake-up call for them because you don't want to go on autopilot too early. That team on defense is capable of making some plays similar to the one they made right there. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 11. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And that throw behind his man. He missed him. Incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Hurts a handoff to Sanders. And he'll get this one up to about his 14. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. On third down, he'll drop the throw. 
And that is incomplete. Well, he got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. And he'll take it on this side of midfield. And that'll be a return of 12 following a very nice punt. And the Seahawks have great field position to start this drive. They take over on the short side of the field. On first down, it's Smith. That's caught over the middle by Fan, And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Let's go From the 35, back to work on second and four. Here's Smith. To the sideline, and that's well done. Able to drag the feet, he's going to have the first down. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets him a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum, and they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Now Smith. They'll get this out wide to Penny. And they're going to move it down inside the 25. A good way there to have him bounce back from the interception last drive. Something underneath, a little bit of rhythm going. I know the best ones in the league have supreme confidence, but every now and then you need a little booster, don't you? This is their way of protecting him and bringing him back, and then they'll turn him loose later, I would think. An entertaining start to this one. More to come on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Seattle, and it is the Seahawks with the football here as they've got it with a second and three forthcoming. Get it. A shotgun snap for Smith. He's got his big tight end fan, and he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. Well, that's now four completions in a row. A good bounce back following the interception last drive. Certainly not letting it affect him, that's for sure. And we all know interceptions are going to happen. So the big trick, don't let it affect you going forward. Most of the good quarterbacks, they just tell the ball boy, get that one out of the rotation, give me a fresh ball, and let's go. He's got his offense moving again. Now here's Jason Myers. He gets set for the Seahawk field goal. He connected on his first. This time it's 39 yards away. Myers' kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So it's fourth and one. They wind up taking the three. I'm not sure that that offensive unit, judging by the sideline, Charles was in 100% agreement with the decision. No, not at all. And offenses want to feel like, hey, you believe in us? Let us go for it? We'll see if that is a problem for them moving forward in this game. Pulls it in at the 13. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage.
So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. On first and 10, it's Sanders. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Hurts fumbles it. For him, fortunately, he's able to get this one back, so it is a first down. Even though he recovered his own fumble, you know how much he hates to put the ball on the ground. He's going to be frustrated with himself. And what do you think the time frame was from the time the ball escaped his grasp to him getting it back? It didn't take that long, right? Right. To him, it probably felt like hours because he's agonizing, like, I've got to get this football back, able to get it done. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Hurd's going to keep it again. And now a fumble. The ball's out. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And this is where the dangers of letting your quarterback run the football. But now look, he goes through ball security drills just like a running back does. But most of the time, the quarterback swings the ball away from his body. And in traffic, sometimes they forget to protect it. Well, let's gaze our attention as the offense takes the field on Rashad Penny. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't it? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. And he finds his target. It's Marquise Goodwin. And he'll get this to the 22. So they begin the play at the 11, and it's a gain of 11. First down. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. Got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. First and ten, Smith. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Darius Slay with a pick. And they will finally put it into the return, but not until he takes it back all the way inside the ten-yard line. Well, this is just crazy. He's got three interceptions, Charles, and we haven't even departed the first half of this ball game. I think if you're looking at the stats right now, you're saying, all right, who's the leading receiver? Well, can you flip it around and say that maybe he is and could be for the game the way that things are going right now? I think if it's him, he wants to be on the field at all times. Ready. Suddenly it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. Hurt sets up to throw it. And down he goes. Pressure hits him back at the 14. Jamal Adams on the safety blitz. Too fast to handle. He continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure. These sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, they've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance to win this game. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Another try after the first down sack. Hurts. Touchdown! Jalen Hurts finding A.J. Brown. And the Eagles get a bit closer. The catch and the touchdown, they were the end result of a terrific route run by the receiver. Elliott on for the extra point. He's got it, and the score is now 27-14. They had the short field, and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And he'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it. 
to 25. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Well, still early in this one, Charles, but the last time this offense was out there, they threw their first interception of the ball game, so try to avoid repeating that mistake here on this drive. And to put a positive spin on it, at least it happened in the first half and not in a close game in the fourth quarter, but you're absolutely right, partner. One of the last things this offensive quarterback wants to witness again in this game. Kind of an obvious question, Charles, but anything you try to avoid after your first pick or you say it's one interception, we're still in the first half, I'm going to do the same thing. I think you want to avoid playing scare, you know, and put it into the mind of the quarterback that you've lost confidence in him. Make sure you get some throws that he's going to be able to complete, make him feel good about himself, and continue to run your offense. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, that's the result you end up with. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up, and then some on second and 13. On the draw, this is Penny. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. Some of your losses get challenged at times. You don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. And some room to run now. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. 63 yards rushing for him. He has been tough to stop here this first half. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. So the big play moves them all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. Now it's Smith off the bootleg. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Darius Slay with a pick. And the Eagles are going to take over here up near the 40. And give him now four interceptions in this game. That's only the third time this has been done since the year 2000. I think that tells you how much better teams have gotten at throwing the football. Because if you go all the way back to 1960, 12 times before that, there have been guys who've gotten four interceptions or more in a game. I mean, most recently since 2000, Delta O'Neal and D'Angelo Hall. Ready? The Eagles in good position to start out as they come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Here's Hurts to throw. This is Smith to the ground. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he's got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 35-yard line. All the option left, it's Hurts, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Here's second and 10. Hurts. Quick slant here to Smith. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. Come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. And they'll run the option on third and short yardage. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. is off and on comes Jake Elliott for the Eagle field goal. 
This from 44 yards out, left hash. The kick by Elliott is good, and that gets him back within 10. Well, still some climbing left to do to get back to even, but forcing a turnover and getting the field goal there, that's a small step toward erasing the early deficit. Absolutely. That interception field goal, that's the beginning of what they hope will be several steps towards erasing that deficit and building a lead of their own by the time this game is over. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Well, let's gaze our attention as the offense takes the field on Rashad Penny. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. And he powers through the first lane, but he's going to be swallowed up behind the line of scrimmage. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Penny. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain there. Now they're looking at a third and 13. Not an easy spot here. They'll be in search of 13 yards to try to pick up the first. Now a deep ball going to be caught here near midfield. And take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. Big plays are starting to become the trend here in this first half. And everything that they've tried has worked. And there's another example right there. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Gino down to throw. Flush to his right. And they'll wind up getting this with all the way down inside the 20. Big yardage there on the scrambler. It gets him a first down. Evident there that he learned his lesson from the last drive. No way he was going to force a throw that time. But nothing broke open, kept it, and ended up running for a first down himself. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. To throw is Smith. Dumps that off to Penny, his running back. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. To throw again on second down, Smith. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. A little too much extracurricular there. When you have a game with a lot of contact, tensions are going to run pretty high. You're going to be emotional, but you have to harness it somehow. And he didn't on that play. Leaves it for Penny. Down at the two. Broke through first contact, but ultimately stopped shy of the goal line. Second and goal, and Penny standing by himself in the backfield. Throwing now is Gino. This is caught. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. They'll wind up losing a yard on the play. And that'll bring up a third down and goal. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. And he's across the chart into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. D.K. Metcalf. 
with his second touchdown here in this first half. And his guys now an extra point away from taking a three-score lead. The extra point now coming from Myers. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So that drive in total eight plays. And it all culminates with a single score. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Taken from about the 12. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. It's Devontae Smith and the Eagles ready to go on offense. He's done his part, but so far it's been in a losing effort, so they've got to fix something. But that doesn't mean changing anything, the way they're throwing the ball around and his catches in production. Keep doing that. They're going to have to fix some things likely on defense to try and slow down their opponents. But so far, he's worth of 100 yards receiving. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Throwing his hurts. And his throw here is incomplete. Nice one and to what he talked to you about. I guarantee he probably is talking about. You might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. I know he was trying to get the completion downfield, but the way this game has gone, with a few of the runs he's made along the way, he should have kept the ball and taken it with his feet downfield. That's the big play that shreds the defense. Instead, he thought to himself, I'm a quarterback. I've got to throw it. He bailed out the defense with that incompletion. Just a net of 34 there, following a punt of 44 yards. And they will take over first and 10. Geno Smith getting ready to go again here on offense. He really continues to pick apart this defense. Last drive, perfect, and it culminated in his third touchdown pass. As long as we've been doing this, how many times has a player in this type of a zone Describe the game as really slowed down. Yep. So right now, instead of warm speed, it's snail's just, pace. Oh, snail's pace for him, and he can do whatever he wants with it. He has all the time in the world to throw the ball, and his offensive line has been giving him that. Breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets in the enemy territory. 81 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Well, that is a running back who was not about to go down easily. He fought his way through the contact until the seas opened up for him. And with a guy his size, you have to know defensively that arm tackles aren't going to fly with him. You have to be able to wrap up, or else he can just brush tacklers aside like they're not even there. And the next-gen stat shows us the tale of how much yardage he was able to pick up after the initial come contact. On, come on. Hey. Now they'll run it again with Penny. Down to about the 45. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defense in front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder coming up here at halftime. We'll ship you off to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman will have first half highlights and analysis from a back and forth first half that we've seen. So third and two. This quite possibly four down territory, though, if they're stopped. Throwing is Smith. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield. And this might be a roughing call. Triple foul. Roughing the pass now, you don't want to see that penalty at any point, but it adds a little extra to it when it comes on third down. It certainly does, because if this were a boxing match, they had them on the ropes there. Third down incompletion, fourth down upcoming. Instead, that mistake resets everything back to first down, which means they have to stay on the field longer to try and stop this drive. I'm trying to decipher what's going on out there, because I don't know.
know if he's just getting bad reads. I don't know if the defense is confusing him. I don't know if he just has, you know, bad info and intel before he snaps the ball, but he's made some pretty bad decisions with the football. Lately. Yeah, several bad decisions on the interceptions he's thrown, and frankly, that should have been another pick right there. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Smith now to throw. Pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back at the 33-yard line. So on fourth down, here's Jason Myers for the Seahawks field goal. This will be from 49 yards out. Myers' kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them Charles. They at least get points in three of them. Yeah, that's when your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack, there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he stepped right up and gave him exactly what they needed. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. Pulls it in at the 13. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off of the end zone. Let go! On first and 10, it's Hurts. Over the middle, complete. It's Smith. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they're having panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. So the completion good for just three, and it'll be second down. From the gun, it's Hurts. And an incomplete pass. I'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play half number one. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. And I think that one might have been intercepted, but he will be ruled out of bounds. So this will go only as incomplete. That's leaking to the right, and he missed it by a foot or two. It's no good, and that will keep the deficit at 20. And now two problems, as I see it. First, you missed the kick, which, granted, was a long one. But second, you set the other guys up a great field position and enough time to maybe get downfield and get a field goal attempt of their own. Well, let's gaze our attention as the offense takes the field on Rashad Penny. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> all right, why cool off? Keep well, everybody here. <laughs> let's stay out on the field and keep going. But all that being said, everything is really working well for them. The play calling's been excellent. The blocking's been terrific. And obviously his vision and legs have hurled them to this big number so far. We could be seeing something really special here. And we'll see how much they give him the ball here. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop him with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Rolling to his right. Looking sideline incomplete. I think you can easily follow the thinking there. The pressure on the last play, uh, they got to him. So they decided, let's get him out of there, bootleg him out to the right. Unable to complete the pass downfield, but the thought process, spot on. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. On fourth down, ready to punt Michael Dixon. And now a high kick here as he'll try to hang it up there. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. That'll go down as just a 20-yard punt. And it will be Eagles football first and 10. 
And the Eagles going to get one final possession in this first half. And with great starting field position, one time out of their pocket, they could still come away with points here in the late going. But first down, Hurts. That swung out wide to Sanders. The Eagles will take their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. From the 45 on second down, Hurts. He'll hit Watkins on the crossing route. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. And now we'll get a late timeout as it comes in the waning moments of quarter number two. Here's Jake Elliott, career long, by the way, for him, 61 yards. They spot it on the midfield stripe, so it is a 60-yard attempt here. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good, and that will keep the deficit at 20. I don't care who you are. 60 yards is a very ambitious attempt. Hard to make even in practice in the best of conditions. And now, worst of all, you get the other guys the ball to start their drive at midfield. And now this throw incomplete, and that is how this first half will come to an end. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. First things first, let's get a check on the next-gen stats from that first half for Philadelphia. And it's been the passing game that's been the story. They have feasted on this secondary to the tune of 200 plus yards already through two quarters. With both of these offenses having their way, it's not likely they'll need to be doing a whole lot at halftime, but the defenses are definitely in need of some adjusting. And for the call of the second half, let's go back out to Brandon and Charles. Yeah, Coach, certainly no shortage of action in those first two quarters. Definitely got to work on my touchdown calls, so we'll see how much voice I have left for the second half here. The Seahawks with the advantage, and they get the football first as the second half is underway. Geno Smith getting ready to go again here on offense. Any surprise in your mind he's out there to start the second half after four first-half interceptions? He's to be surprised by a lot of things, partner, but in this case I'm not because you know they want him to be their guy. And the only way to truly establish that is to give him a chance to work through some of the issues he had in the first half. They'll fake it. Now Smith. He gets it to his running back, Rashad Penny. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open. And now here's another interception. And he'll be brought down around the seven-yard line. Pretty much everything went their way offensively in the first half, but now an interception on the opening drive of the third quarter. As we know, the key to everything here, don't get careless with the football. The problem is you've got to stay aggressive as well. So where's the line between being aggressive and attacking and being overly aggressive? I think they just crossed it on that one. Suddenly it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. They'll drop the throw. His throw incomplete. Partner, this is almost an unwinnable spot for a defense. They have to come right out for a first and goal trying to stop them. But let me hold on a second. Let me take that back real quick. They can win here if they force a field goal try. Still a long ways away from that happening, but that has to be what they're thinking right now. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Now they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. Sanders again. 
What a stand so far defensively, and now that's going to bring up a fourth and goal. They're going to run this with a tight end, and he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Grant Calcaterra taking it in from two yards out. And the Eagles' decision to go for it pays off with six points. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Elliott now to have the extra point. And that will cut this lead down to 13. So that drive, four plays. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This take it in at the goal line. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and 10. Play fake, and it's Smith. Completes it to Fant on the right side. So the completion good for seven there. And that'll bring up second down. Play action, it's Smith. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. At this point, this offense feels like they can just roll out anything, and it would work. They are certainly in no hurry for this one to end. Not when they can rack up some stats and continue to add to their lead. Ready, ready. Play action. Here's Smith. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. It'll go as a gain of four, and that'll make it second down. Yeah, ready. They'll fake the handoff. Now Smith. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. At least this time he's getting hit after a positive play for his offense. The pressure was coming through yet again, but he certainly didn't stick around for the sack on this occasion. Found an escape route and ended up getting the first down before taking the hit. So for Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Now Gino. No chance to get away there from Smith as he goes down. The safety blitz turns out to be a great call defensively as they sack him for a loss of nine. This is a little hard for me to compute because I'm watching sack after sack happen, but somehow they're still behind in the game. I would expect all of this defensive pressure to translate to them taking the lead thus far. It hasn't happened. Time's winding down. They don't want to waste this type of performance from these ace pass rushers. Yeah, they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Here's Smith. Short throw to Disley. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. 
which is always hard for the quarterback, reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? He's got his big tight end fan. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles 33. The third down conversion successful. A gain of 11. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now Smith. throw knocked away and incomplete. That was well played, but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage, realized he had support behind him, and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone, and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. Smith's throw into the hands of Fan, and he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. On third down, Penny. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. 99 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now it's Smith. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. Now whistles and a stoppage here. Looks like one of the Eagles is in some discomfort out there. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Now here's Jason Myers. He gets set for the Seahawk field goal. This just a 35-yard attempt from the left hash. Myers' kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So this drive maybe didn't end with the same kind of success they had in the first half, but they do add three to their lead. And defensively, I think they went in there at halftime and made a pact with each other and said, look, we can't let these guys keep driving it right down our throat. Not perfect giving up three but a much better start than the way they played in the first half. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. For Philadelphia's offense ready to go again. Right now, Charles, it just feels like they're trying to keep pace. They did score the touchdown last time out, but they still trail by double digits here. We'll see if this offense is once again up to the task. Yeah, and I think that after the last drive, they've gotten pretty revved up, don't you think? Everything they were doing was working pretty well. They go back out there with the same mindset, play the same tempo and the same pace. Still a lot of time left to make something happen in this one. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And he will lose 
Huge yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Hurts. He finds his tight end, Goddard. That's complete. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. The completion results there in nine yards. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. The Eagles send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. This is taken at the 23. It'll be a 40-yard punt, eight on the return, and it will be first to 10 as they take over. Seattle again getting ready to take over offensively. And last time they were able to churn some clock. They got the field goal added onto their lead, but that was a drive that was so long, it should have ended in a touchdown. You know that's how they felt. Could we both be headed to the airport after the game? But we probably should go to the post-game press conference because someone's going to ask the head coach about this drive, and he's going to profess that he was happy to get points. And we know that's not true. Yeah. Okay, after this type of a drive, not getting a touchdown, a huge disappointment. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no game. On second down, here's Penny. Officially nothing on that one, no gain, so they're left with still 10 to go on third down. Right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. On third down, here's Walker. And this play comes to a halt at the 33, and obviously that's well short of the first down. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll kick it away for the second time. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. yardage here back at the 21 yard line two yards the loss second and 12 and now you have to wonder partner at what point in time do they forget the running game it's been a struggle so far in this one i would think they'd have to start throwing it a little bit more first play of the drive goes the wrong way here's second and 12. Hurt sets up to throw it. And this is caught by Watkins. So five yards here, five on the play. Third and seven now. <laughs> Throwing is Hurts. And that will be incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still. With his talent, you would expect him to have more completions to him in this game. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. He'll look to set up his blockers. A nice return that time gets 12 yards back. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. 13 yards rushing for him now 
as his sensational afternoon continues. The last run got six, now second and four. Oh, they'll try the sweep. It's Lockett with it. A solid stiff arm. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. First down Seattle on a pickup of 13. An excellent run there coming from out wide. And we used to consider these jet sweeps to be gadget plays or something a little bit unusual, right? But now most teams have some version of this play in their playbook. And I think it's a lot because of the receivers that are being developed nowadays. These guys look like running backs, even though they're playing out on the perimeter. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there holding the point of attack and not giving ground. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Again, it's Penny. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Ten yards and a Seattle first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. So far, it's first and ten. Penny up the middle. Pushes past him. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Another nice game, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Just a terrific run there, Charles, from a running back who was so compact and powerful, and that strength was on display there. Yeah, this defense has had its share of problems getting guys to the ground, and here's another example. They never should have allowed this play to gain as many yards as it did before tackling early in the play, led to big yardage after the fact. And the next-gen stat shows us the tale of how much yardage he was able to pick up after the initial contact. They'll try the air now with Smith. And he's going to go down. Back at the 27-yard line, he's sacked. Brandon Graham giving him once again his third sack of the afternoon. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Smith. And my goodness, another interception. Darius Slay with a pick. And the Eagles are going to have it here at their own 15. And we now have a new single game interception king, a record-breaking fifth pick there. If that's not the true definition of a ball hawk, I don't know what is. That is absolutely phenomenal. What comes to mind quickly, partner, is one of the more recent ones to get to four, D'Angelo Hall, a terrific player in his own right. But in this case, five. That sets a brand new NFL record. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 15. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Tariq Woolen picks it, uses the stiff arm. And the return here will go to the 31-yard line. Right, I think this will win by very simply because he overestimated his arm strength and his ability to fit it anywhere he wants to. A lot of quarterbacks do that and often pay the price. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. 
And they'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and ten. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and ten. After the interception, here's Smith. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes in bounds. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right? Whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or the field turf, the rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. That is first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. On any given pass play, you never know exactly where your exit points are going to be. On this play, it was flushed to his left, still on the run, able to accurately throw the football for a nice first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. To throw is Smith. Dumps that off to Penny, his running back. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Short completion, just four yards, and it'll be second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. And wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. Smith. Escaping the pressure right. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Well, this is getting ridiculous. Eight sacks now. That time, multiple guys get to it. And the attempt at three will have to come from the other end of the field as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we'll begin it with a field goal try here. This to make it a three-score game late. Myers' kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So that almost certainly the final piece to this puzzle, a three-score lead. I don't think there's any coming back from there. But you know normally I'd get on you for giving up on the game right here, but I do think you're right in this case. This late in the game, two scores is tough enough. Three, I'm with you. That seems out of the question. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. Fielded right around the eight. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things in this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for Burns Fumbleson. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage. But the good news outweighs it, able to retain possession. That was big for them. Good news, they kept the ball. Bad news, it's third and long. Here's Hurts to throw. Oh, going for Sanders downfield. And got his man complete. The 20. And here he'll get it down to the seven. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. The offense has to love that because that was just a dump down and then he turned something out of seemingly nothing. And the best quarterbacks understand that dumping it down 
is often a good play, a better play than even what was drawn up. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll run with Sanders. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Miles Sanders taking it in from seven yards away. And the Eagles have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Elliott good on the extra point, and they're able to cut this deficit down to 12. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. Taking it about the one. Oh, good-looking return set up here. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. And we will get another look at Seattle's offense. Now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Now he dumps this off over the middle, and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Five yards remain on second down. Back to throw, Smith. To the sideline, and oh, that's well done. Able to drag the feet, he's going to have the first down. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course, you got to keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That's a third down conversion of 24 yards there. Nice play. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive is what is known as a put away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. Ready. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 32 yard line. From the gun, here's Smith. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far in second down. I don't know about you, but I wanted to reach out of the booth and snatch that pass myself. That thing floated forever up there. I think that threw off the timing of the receiver. That's why he couldn't get his feet down, even though he caught the ball. You know, Eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. Hassan Reddick picks up his second sack of the afternoon. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has now received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He'll find Metcalf. And he's going to get this to the 31, but that is still well short of what he needed. They get 12 yards back, but it still leads to a fourth and long. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. So on fourth down, here's Jason Myers for the Seahawk field goal. From the right hash, this from 48. Myers' kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. It's a important there as they widen their lead in this fourth quarter. All right, partner, help me out with the math here. Make sure I am on point, because the way I see it, the other guys still need two touchdowns, but in addition, a two-point conversion. So this is all about them playing perfect football from here on out. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. Fielded right around the eight. 
And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Philadelphia's offense ready to give us another look. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Look and repeat that Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. To throw again on second down, Hurts. And this one incomplete, threw it down at the feet of his receiver. And they approach this to a lot of confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. And Hurts is intercepted, his third of the game. Tariq Woolen picks it, and the Seahawks are going to take over a couple of yards shy of midfield. I think it's safe to say this is a game he's not going to forget anytime soon, Charles. Three interceptions. It's rare that we see three interceptions by one team, let alone by an individual. And I think that after the second one, he's probably telling his teammates, any ball that's in the air, it's going to be mine. And that turned out to be true. And out now come the Seahawks. They have to like the position that they are in. Fourth quarter, two-score lead, and now the ball back after the INT. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. The Smith's throw into the hands of Lockett. And he's taken down at the 50 after a short gain of two. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys that we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. From the 50, it's Smith. And he's going to be brought down here in the backfield. They'll wind up losing a full nine yards here on the sack. Now it's third down. Boy, every time I see speed like that off the edge, Charles, I just don't know how these offensive linemen do it. I would think that they would get called for holding every play, and maybe they should have been called for holding on that one. Yeah, maybe not just holding, but sometimes you end up setting back in the offensive backfield a little bit farther to try and help you with the edge. That's a penalty as well. Sometimes you overset, they'll come inside of you. That's what speed does. It disrupts an offense. And right now, you got to pay attention to this edge rusher on every single down. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And he can't find anywhere to go down. Daryl Taylor able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. It has been a rough afternoon for him trying to get rid of the football. See, that's now five sacks. How'd you like to be the offensive coordinator, the offensive line coach trying to come up with an answer for this pass rush? What blocking assignments do you change? Can guys play a little bit better? And we're seeing the end result on the scoreboard. Long day in the pocket for their quarterback. And the job becomes twice as difficult now after the sack. It's second and 20. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. And they'll get him down and right around the 11 yard line. It's just a game of a couple there on the scramble. And now it's third down. He'll drop to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Got some applause for the defense there. They forced him to 
throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And taken at the 46. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And this offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and 10. Here come the Seahawks now set to take over on offense. They've got a chance now to put this game away following that last defensive stop and punt. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. A gain of eight there on the play. And that'll bring up a second down in just a couple. I like the thought process, I like the design, but I think he may have waited a little too long to spot his man because if you're gonna run that drag route, you gotta put it on him and let him turn up field. Instead, he waits until his receiver's too close to the sideline and they don't get the yards after the catch. Throwing again on second down. Smith. Pressure comes and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. Hassan Reddick giving him once again his third sack of the afternoon. Well, this has to count as a great team effort today, but this man, he's been at the center of all of it. Really special day for any defense to have this many sacks in a game, even more so for this player. One of the best individual efforts of the season. Now a tough spot for Geno Smith and company after the sack. It's third and long. Geno down to throw. And he's got Rome. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Turns out to be a great idea to tuck that one. Good for 24 yards. Carter, even I can figure out who deserves the lion's share of credit for their lead right now because he's been terrific in a dual threat role, really chewing up yardage and getting them points with his legs. Simply put, that defense has had no way of stopping him, and that's why his side is on top. Territory now. Here's a first and ten as they're down to the 29 yard line. Now a throw from outside the pocket, complete out left, and he'll be brought down at about the 23 yard line. Everyone has their strengths, able to move to the right or their left, being able to throw the football. So that means you've got to work on both because you never know which way you're going to get flushed by pressure. In this situation, able to escape to his left and makes an accurate throw. And they're going to get this down to about the 17-yard line here. As he came to the line of scrimmage, he knew he didn't need much to reset the chain, so when he saw the space he needed, no hesitation. He went to the marker and got his guys a first down. From the 17 now, here's a first and 10. From the red zone now, Smith leaves it for Penny. And all the way down inside the 5 and 4. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Throwing now is Gino. Eluding the pressure right. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. Not the first and goal play they drew up. Multiple defenders in to bring him down to the ground. First and goal looked like things were set up nicely, and now all of a sudden on second and goal, Charles, a big challenge ahead of them. And you have to know when you're this close to the goal line, things are going to happen faster, so you've got to get the ball out quick. Not going to have much time in the pocket before the defenders bring pressure. 
Penny on the toss right. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Were you as surprised as I was that they actually ran it on second down there? I thought that they would go ahead and throw it in every situation here. Yeah, they've thrown for three touchdown passes down here. I think they probably go back to the air. Yeah, I think so, but ordinarily, second down is when you run your play. And he will not be denied in the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. Rashad Penny, an eight-yard touchdown run. And the Seahawks have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. So a toss play there does the trick as he's into the end zone. And you don't run this unless you're sure you've got a guy who has the speed who can get to the edge because what you're hoping for, for him to win the race to the corner and turn it upfield to the end zone. Now Myers for the extra point. He's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. A good drive that time as he got nine plays in all. And it's finished off by a Rashad Penny touchdown run. And yeah, after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Fielded right around the eight. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. But we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, okay, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing a partner. They do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they're trying to hit the reset button starting the line. Throwing on first down, and this one winds up to be incomplete from the 21 at second and 10. He'll look to throw. Complete. Smith has it. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Seven catches for him now in this last one. A first down. Hurts. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawks defense. Tariq Woolen in there to record another sack. And that is now six on the afternoon for this defensive unit. I don't know what else can be said about this pass rush. They have been sensational. CD, that is now six sacks for them. And how many times do we talk to offensive coordinators and they say a sack is a result of Everyone on offense not doing their job. But let's be honest about this one. This is the offensive line unable to counter the pass rush. They've been teeing off all game long. After the sack on first down, Hurts. Quick slant here to Smith. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Hurt sets up to throw it. Now they go screen. It's complete. No gain on the screen there at second down. That's a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule run down in distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. It's caught on the right side of Smith. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. That's into the hands of Pascal. And they're going to be set up now with a ball at the 13-yard line. From the 13, now they work on first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Flushed out right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Eagle football here as we get your reset. Second and five from the eight. 
They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. Looking to throw again on second down. Hurts. And he's got his man in stride. Complete. Now you got to your guys to the line and get him set. Throwing his Hurts. And this is caught. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Jalen Hurts finding A.J. Brown. And the Eagles are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. Hurts will throw. Flush to his right. And he's going to get in for the score. And the lead now cut to 14. And with a successful two-point try, the QB rolling out, I would imagine, on the defense, that makes it tough. When you, he goes out, he's got the option to run or pass. Yeah, it really does. If you decide not to bring extra people or extra pressure, maybe you have to have a spy on the quarterback, someone to account for him, because oftentimes, that is the unaccounted for player. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the Seahawks, looks like they've recovered. They have. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't yet. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. Smith going to throw it. They'll get this out wide to Penny. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. Ready. Coming up on a second and six. Hustle, hustle. Smith now to throw. That is taken in by the tight end fan. Now a second timeout called for by the defense. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Here we go, here we go. Hurry, hurry. Now Gino. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. First and ten, it's Hurts. And it's out. He put it on the carpet. And the Seahawks have recovered. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. And this one all over but the shouting, you might say. Now, there's one timeout remaining defensively, but probably no real need to use it here. Yeah, the only time they would use it is strictly for pride. The Eagles will take their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Throwing now, Smith. A quick throw there, going to be batted away and incomplete. Now the secondary has really struggled today, but it's a little bit of a measure of revenge, isn't it? And they just followed the basic rules. See ball, knock the ball away, turns into a nice play. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Now here's Michael Dixon as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he'll try and hurry the kick, gets it away, but it's not looking that great. A special teams mistake there, no doubt. Just 26 yards officially on the punt. And the Eagles will have great starting field position here as they take over. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. From the gun, it's Hurts. And his throw's going to be incomplete. 
face and this defense has had to share struggles all game long and they know that they can put it all behind them if they defend well here in the two minute drill excellent coverage right there to force the incompletion Hurts throw here take it in as he's able to find Goddard and he gets this one inside the 15 just a yard or two shy of the 10 from down at the 12 it's first and 10 here's Hurts to throw Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Back to throw again. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. And this crowd is on pins and needles now because anytime you see the ball heading for the end zone, you really hold your breath, and they come out of their seats. That one falls incomplete. Hurts. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by Jamal Adams. And the Seahawks are going to take over once again, and they'll have it at their own eight-yard line. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. And they've got this one in hand. No timeouts remaining defensively, so this one should just be one kneel and then handshakes. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. And one of the whistles for a timeout. So they'll stop the clock here in a game that's been decided in the closing seconds. Now it looks like he'll throw here. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Part of what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play. And he goes down, it's a sack. They get him back at his own three-yard line. Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is of all those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish.